so far, all I can say is wow. You ever been in a service where you just feel the Holy Spirit? You know, I remember some guys, the disciples at one point, uh, had lost their best friend. His name was Jesus. And they gathered. They didn't know what to do. They did what we do. They just they called their friends. They didn't call them. They just had to send something. But they got together. And you know what happened? Jesus showed up. You know what happens to a church when we agree but we come together? Right in the middle of it, Jesus shows up. You know, if you came here tonight, it's because you really love somebody, and death and grief just absolutely sucks. Now, I couldn't say that before I lost somebody, but I got a card now that I can. And if you've lost somebody, my mama puts it like this. She said, you just got introduced to a fraternity and a sorority you didn't ask for. And you miss them. And in our generation, it's weird because you still got them on Facebook. You still got their number in your phone. You still have text messages. So what do we do with that? What do you do with that? Grief is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. Grief will pick you up and leave you and just strangle you. And it takes grace to grieve. And sometimes you got to forgive yourself for what you did during survival season. Mama, forgive yourself for the things that you said when you just was cussing in a pillow at night. Sometimes you got to forgive yourself because God doesn't run from you in your pain. He reaches right down where you could not reach up anymore. And he says, child, I know. And I came to kill death, hell, and the grave. And one day you're going to see that that you'll be with me and there'll be perfect peace. But he understands the pain on this side. At 27 years old, I lost my brother. He took his own life. (gasps) And I remember the call. I remember what I was doing. I remember the moment, and I bet you do too. I remember with my sister two years ago. I was 36 years old and lost her life to breast cancer. All of it, it, it it comes on you just like that. So I wanted to give you just a couple of things. Listen, I am not the guru in this. Some of you have been through things that are unimaginable. Some of you have lost children and sons and daughters and and brothers and spouses. Some of you are mourning a relationship that may not be physically dead, but it is they've left. But pain is pain. And we're not here to compare and and say who's got the worst pain. Oh, that, that ain't that. What I'm here to just simply say is, Now you're part of a family that you didn't ask for. So what do we do now? You know, David lost his son. And I'm just going to talk to you at 11 minutes and 58 seconds. Because sometimes I'll be sitting in a service going, oh, Lord, how long is this thing going to be? Okay? 11 minutes and 50 seconds. And then we're going to sing a song and we're going to head out. So don't leave. We're just going to sing together. And we're going to cry together. But David lost his son. You know what he did? He did what we did. He mourned. He mourned, and he found out that his boy was dead, and he got up, and he got ready. And he teaches something that's so very important that I want to teach us, that you got to mourn it, but keep moving forward. You can lose yourself in the loss of someone else. I am not saying that you're going to move forward and not cry at night. I didn't say that you're going to move forward and everything. Because what they don't leave in the story is what that mama went through losing a child. What they don't tell you in the story is, yes, that, that Job said the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But what you don't see and what they don't share, what's not on a coffee cup, is when Job said, I cursed the day I was even born. We don't talk about that because we don't talk about the drunken nights where you drank so much just so you could sleep only to stay up and feel like crap the next day. We don't talk about that. But as you mourn it, things are going to happen. But listen, listen, after that night, after that night, get back up and you keep moving forward. I give you permission tonight to mourn it. I give you permission to give yourself mercy and grace. Receive it from the Father for the things that you did when you were hurting the most. But keep moving forward. I came to tell you, you can keep moving forward. That's what David teaches us. And he teaches us a couple of things that I think is valuable from God's Word. That as he moved forward, he said something to himself. There's some dark places you can't let your mind go. So he said this. 
Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Look at my face. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell. I cannot dwell in what I've lost. I cannot dwell in the darkness of it. I cannot dwell in the pain of it. I cannot dwell in the details. I cannot dwell in the lawsuit. I cannot dwell in the loss of that person. I can't sit there and dwell. I'll think about it, but I can't, I can't live there because I'll lose myself. He said, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. And if you dwell in defeat, that's where the devil wants to keep you. But even in the Old Testament, you know they took 70 days to mourn? Do you know some of them took months to mourn? Because they knew the importance of it. You know what David did after he lost his mentor? His best friend, Jonathan. Saul was hit by an arrow. Jonathan was killed, ultimately. And so what David did is he, is he, is he mourns it, and, and he's learning this. I'm mourning it, and i got to move forward. I'm just going to teach you just a couple of things. But in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18, he said this, Also he bade them. I don't know what bade them. I think it means he told them. Okay? This, is King, this is that King James version. Okay? But he said he bade them, whatever that is, to teach the children of Judah to use the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. You know what he did? He took the thing that tried to kill Saul. He took that pain and he gave it purpose. He started passing down to his kids stories. Look at me. Their life may be over, but their story lives on through you. So this Christmas, don't you shy away from telling stories that make you laugh. Telling stories that make you just, have you ever just got to where you just laugh so hard? You know what I'm talking about? I was laughing with somebody earlier. But it's good to laugh. But he gave it purpose. Cancer tried to kill my wife. You know what she did? Now she does Hope XO. And she helps cancer, little cute cancer fighters all over the world, right? What are you going to do with your pain? Don't you die with it. They die twice if you don't remember them. you got to give it purpose. So let, let me just say this because we just got a couple of minutes together. Sometimes you just got to cry about it. You know, the Bible says there's a time to weep. There's a time to mourn, right? And I'll cry with you. And if you need to cry, we'll just come around you. We'll cry. But we're going to get you back up, and we're going to keep moving forward. Because I promise you this. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? There are physical graveyards, and there are spiritual graveyards. And in the spiritual graveyard, that person is still living, but their spirit died years ago. And God is coming back to not just, not, I'm, I'm not talking about just a res restoration. Like, like I'm not just talking, I, I'm talking God wants to revive you where you can tell that person's story. I, I met with uh, our family last week, and uh, my mother-in-law lost her father last year, and uh, her father's wife came, and I knew, and it was different, and I hugged her neck, and we couldn't even make it in the house before we just, all the stuff, you know what I'm talking about, so I want, this is what I want to leave with you. As you choose to walk out of this place, I'm going to ask you this as your challenge, okay? Then I'm going to give you a spiritual challenge. Here's the, here's the physical challenge. Help somebody else with the hell that you've been through. Don't you waste your pain. Help somebody with the hell that you've been through, okay? That's my first commission. My second one with five minutes left is this. As I close with this guy by the name of Job, if we were comparing stories, he, he's got it. Okay, he wins. Lost 10 kids. I mean, listen, his wealth. And, and, and it's on top of all that, there's nothing worse than, than losing babies, your, your children. Can't imagine. Then, then he loses all of his stuff. And then on top of that, he was sick. And if I don't feel good, I don't care how spiritual you think I am. If I don't feel good, there's times I'll wake up doubting my salvation and everything else. <laughs> so do my kids. They're like, he ain't a real pastor. He fake. 
Because we can put the robes on and act all cute and act like we know everything, but we don't. And we're just as broken as you are. We hurt. And sometimes we cuss in traffic. But I learned this with Job. His wife said, curse God and die. And I heard a bunch of uh, redneck Baptist preachers get on to her. But listen, you go through what this woman went through, and, and if that's all she said, <laughs> she ain't doing too bad. I don't blame her. When you've been through stuff, you have a little empathy towards people. When you've been through stuff, you, you understand. But I, clo- I, I came to close with this, that there's hope after heartache. There's hope after heartache. Job went from wishing he was never born to this. But he never lost hope in God. This is how Job made it through. You ready for this? Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. I will Surely defend my ways to his face. <laughs> Death leaves an empty hole that only hope can fill. That's what he was saying. That hope is Jesus. That, that, that hope is, is, is the fact I'm going to see my loved one again one day. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? I imagine that it's like when military uh, men and women come home. And you see that kid just like running, like I will like grown man schoolgirl cry. You know what I'm talking about? Like I will, like, I'll watch that and be like, I'm coming home. And just, but, but I imagine that that's what it's going to be like. Imagine that heaven is going to be like that one day, that we're going to be able to see our loved ones. And it's just, you can't even stop us from getting there. I can imagine the joy. He said, though he slay me, my hope is in him. I will not give up. What he was saying is simply this. I know what my weapon is when I'm the weakest. My, we- my weapon is worship. And he chose to worship his way through it. Sometimes you got to get alone by yourself and play the song a thousand times and sing to the top of your lungs and cry out and say, God, I need you. You don't need to write out something for him. You can just simply say, help, I need you. And I'm mad and I'm frustrated. And I don't even know how to pray. And really, if I'm being honest with you, God, I don't even know how I feel right now. Be honest. He said he went through some dark days. We highlight the good stuff. But it was in those bad, dark moments that I wanted to remind your spirit that he held on to hope after his heartache. He said, yes, yeah, you may slay me now, but I'm going to see you one day. And I know there's a reason I may not understand it. I don't have to like it to trust God. I don't have to like it to follow Him. We got, like, build a bear Jesus. Like, everything's good. I'm going to get a little blessing. I'm going to stuff it in my little bear. Oh, prosperity, I'm going to do that. Oh, good looks, whoo, going to do that. Six-pack abs, throw them in there, right? But it's not build a bear Jesus. It's trusting Him when life doesn't make sense. Sometimes the best thing you, you can do for somebody that's going through hell is shut your mouth and hug their neck. Don't try to tell, don't compare stories, don't do all that stuff. Don't, 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 don't. So I just studied people that have been through more than me, and I thought, okay, well, if you can worship your way through it, then bet. I can too. And I can be honest with where I'm at. So I came to remind your spirit tonight that Psalms 27, written by David, is still there. He said, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Right here, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. He said, wait, I say, on the Lord. And this is the beautiful thing about it. He's teaching every single one of us that praises our protocol. At midnight, Paul and Silas decided, I don't know what else to do, but I know one thing. I'm going to worship the God that I feel like has the answer, and that's what they did. And praise will change your perspective. It'll pick you up and remind you that God is in control, even if you are not. It will remind your soul that in the middle of the pain that you're going through, that praise opens the prison that you're in. Doors come flying wide open. And then I was like, oh, let's go. This is awesome. But Job teaches us that we can, that we can, that we can worship our way through anything. So I challenge you this. 
we try to keep uh, the Alexa girl. I'll be like, run every demon out of this house. Put some worship music on. You know what I'm saying? We keep worship music playing it, not because we're spiritual, because we're that fleshly. <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> I can't be that real, because are we live? Huh? <laughs> oh, we're not? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I definitely, Lordy Jesus. Lord, I, I got to quit. I'm over my time. But I, I, I want to close with this. Uh, in the middle of me, in a midnight hour, when um, all I could think of was myself, all I could think of was my pain. Some of my greatest help came from helping others. Some of my healing came from helping others. It's the weirdest thing in the world. You ever went to AA? I heard the last step. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, just earlier <laughs> on my way back up to this. They say the last step is helping others. And I learned that because this guy was at Kia, and he said, I relapsed because I quit helping others. And you're going to relapse in this pain if you, don't, if you quit helping others. Don't forget the assembling of yourselves together. There's power here. But when I got in a bad mood, you know what my kids would do? I'd be driving down the road. Bro, your hair's fire, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I just, awesome. Uh, but I, it's good to laugh. <clears throat> but I, I, I'd be in a bad mood. And when you're in a bad mood, you want to be in a bad mood. You want to turn bad music on. You know what I'm saying? I'd like, let me get there. You know what I'm talking about? And I'd uh, be driving down the road, and my kids will see my face. Because I can see it in your face, and your friends can see it. So don't, you're telling on yourself, okay? you got, like, boycotting people with your body language, sitting in meetings, like, all smug. That's why I can preach to you whether you smile or you look at me funny. Mm. But watch this. I've been driving down the road. You know what my kids would say? I see that smile. I see that smile. And I'm in pain. I'm like, I don't want to smile. Right? Then, you know, when you hold it back and your lips start going like, like, like it starts going. <laughs> and they'll be like, I see that smile. I see. And then I would start smiling. And my story is simply this. As Job began to put his hope back where it's supposed to be, he reminded through the Spirit God was in heaven going, I see that smile. I see that joy coming back. I see you walking in an anointing stronger than you've ever been because you did not quit. When life got hard, I see that smile. Holy Spirit, thank you. As we worship you, we hold on to the promise. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once have you left us or forsaken us. Never once have we had to do it all by ourselves. And God, I thank you for my journey family. I feel connected to this group tonight. And I'm thankful that they decided to come out on a Wednesday night. So God, thank you for leadership that will put something like this on. Holy Spirit, meet us right here. Give us a holy hug from heaven as we just stand up and we worship you. So God, our adoration, our eyes are fixed on your face. God, give your church, your daughters and your sons, healing hope and the faith to keep moving forward. In Jesus' name, the church said, amen and amen.